Hey everyone, welcome back to Moose Militaria. Today I'm going to be sitting down and doing a long awaited video of the loose shuts decals and the real and the fake out there on the market at the moment. This video is a different style of video as you may already better hear by the audio. I'm using my microphone today to record this one, so if there isn't any problems I, I apologise in advance. However, I'm still try uh, going to try my best to explain what everything is as clearly and coherently as possible. Uh, as well as that, I will be showing you photos on screen to better explain it and to visualise what I'm talking about. Before we get started, please make sure to like and subscribe as it helps out massively and goes a long way. So without further ado, let's get started. So a brief bit of history, I guess you could call it, about the manufacturing of these loose shots decals is the difference between the silver and the gold type of decal. I've originally suggested in a few of my past videos that I either wasn't sure why there was a difference, or that it may have been a late war factor when they started to run out of materials, produce the gold decals that they resorted to the silver ones, as they might have been easier to produce and make. But a theory or suggestion I've seen recently, while after filming all these videos, even the M35B that haven't, which hasn't come out yet, um, is that they were all originally printed in silver, and then due to an oxidization with the material, the coating, uh, that was applied over the top of the decal to seal it in and glue it to the um, helmet shell. Uh, over the 80 years, these helmets have been sitting around in collections, storages, and bits and pieces like that. They've gone to this um, gold color, which is more prominent, and you do often see the gold color, the gold decal nowadays. There are silver ones out there, as I say, but they are obviously, they might have a hint of gold. They might be weird like that, but hopefully that gives you a bit more understanding of that sort of possible theory. This sounds possible, I suppose, and about right for what could be the reason why there was the the difference in, between the gold and the silver, silver decals. Um, however, I'm not entirely sure, as it could be a wide variety of things, and it is just a theory at the end of the day. Um, however, hopefully, again, that gives you guys a bit more information about the two types of decals that you will find, the silver and the gold. Um, as well as that, these decals remain fairly consistent in terms of their design throughout the war. There wasn't really any drastic changes or features which altered, uh, which were altered, which makes my job a lot easier when it comes down to explaining what makes them fake and real. Firstly, let's talk about some fake decals. These fake decals come in all sorts of weird designs, and I'll try to explain and be as broad as possible and show you photos on screen to help you help explain what I'm talking about a bit better. So, on these cheaper fakes that you might find in Epic Militaria or Soldiers of Fortune, if you're living in the UK, uh, they typically have a filled-in space above the swastika and often a filled-in space above the Lushuts logo. This colour blocking, I guess you could call it, isn't accurate one bit. I've not seen an original with it on, and I would highly doubt the originals would have it on, even if. Um, and it's a very blatant way to identify cheap decals. They often get put on like restored helmets, these sorts of cheaper decals, because they're easy to get hold of and they're just readily available and there, I guess, for people. I believe this one is called the poker decal. Um, it, again, I'm not too sure on these names, but I believe that the one with the colour blocking above the swastika and above the logo is the poker one. Now, we're going to talk about probably one of the best fakes on the market. And the one that, uh, without a doubt, would fool a newer collector, and that is the Methner and Burger decal. Uh, I'm not sure, I probably pronounced that horribly wrong, but <laughs> that's kind of what it is. I will put a picture on screen to show you guys. I'm not sure if these are fantasy names or names of original decal producers to help convince people that these are real decals or wh whatever the case may be. But this decal is essentially flawless, as you will see. Um, and it isn't a cheap decal and doesn't have the colour blocking above the swastika or the loose shots logo. And it even has the open wings, which look quite good, in my personal opinion. However, one way which I believe to be the most modern, up-to-date way of identifying real and fake decals, or this one, is through the analysis of the lettering. In the case of this example, the S is slightly squashed at the top and is dis disproportionate uh, to the lower half. On all original examples I've seen, the S is consistent in shape and flows nicely with the other letters. In this example, it stands out quite a bit once you notice the flaw. The tricky thing about this decal is, as well as according to the website that sells this decal, it is produced and printed with the most period correct way of printing decals. I believe like some silk printing, 
like actual proper like blocks. It's it's a very litigious process and very long process at that. Um, but it's very close to the original way of doing it. So it is very quality wise. It's very good and close to the original what you'd expect from an original one. Now I'm going to talk about briefly that some of the sloppy effects out there, which still do fool some people, and they are more they are uh, weirder, I guess you could say. Uh, now we're going to. Now the one I'm showing you now is, um, it doesn't have the color blocking, which is signs of a decent decal at that. However, it is still quite cheap. But you may be able to pick up on the right uh, of the wing, is that the border is really thick and the feathers in the wings are really bubbly and silly almost. The lines within the decal overall itself are very thick and there's little to no silver or gold showing. Um, on original examples, which I will get to in a moment, you will see a lot more colour and a lot more like pop with the colour. Not much black in it at all. There is still quite a lot of black lines to kind of contrast and add shadows and whatnot. But there's still a lot of colour there, which is obviously an original feature, not a fake feature. And one last way this decal you're seeing now is a blatant fake is that the lettering looks gigantic compared to the rest of the decal. And the font looks super stretched and bold itself. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how you'd tell that one. These typically don't pop up as much on uh, modern auction houses now. You do see the better ones, if that. Um, but normally, they, you do get quite convincing decals. But these older ones, this one I just showed you, are probably more like 60s, uh, like, you know, before the 2000s fakes. I'm not too sure. I wouldn't want to say for certain, but that's kind of the period based on how frequent I see these helmets now um, on where I'd place the like timeline of these decals existing and being produced. The last fake I'll be showing you guys now is another fairly sloppy fake, but it's a little bit better than the previous one, I suppose. And this one looks okay, but again, the lines inside the decal itself feel very cramped and tight. Real ones look a lot more open and empty, as I just said, and they give more chance for the colour to appear, and the lines are a lot more spread out on the original ones, that is. As well as that, if you look at the top of the wings, um... There are virtually no dots there to create the shading. It could just be the lighting of the photo, but even on real examples in similar lighting conditions, the dots in the top part of the wing are typically very prominent, unlike this one. And lastly, the font of the Lushots logo is a clear example. It's very pencil-like and very th uh, thin and digitalized. If that doesn't convince you enough that it is a fake decal, the F and the T sit next to each other is nothing like what you'd find on a real decal. And the font is a very a clear way of finding a real and fake decal um, but they are quite good these days and there is they will probably eventually catch up to the point where they are indistinguishable but the font is a high a good way to look and start if you're trying to really get into identifying fake and real decals uh, for the loose shuts helmets so moving on to real decals i feel like there is a lot to say really after talking about what makes the decals out there um fake but I'll point out some typical ways to identify a real one now for you guys. The colour feels a lot more authentic. Um, it isn't a solid colour throughout, even on minty, unissued examples. The colour isn't a perfect colour. Normally it feels quite dirty and grimy, and authentic is probably the best way to describe that. As well as that, the way these decals age with the helmets is typically the same. And if you've ever had the chance to own or see one of these helmets in person, um... They really do look the part and they don't look sloppy at all. Whereas reapplied decals are original and old shells which have new decals thrown onto them. Usually are very obvious and stand out like a sore thumb in most cases. Because it looks very new and not very genuine to the shell. Another way to tell is the open wings on real examples. The feathers are spread out quite far apart compared to some of the fakes. Thus creating the open wing. And that if you aren't sure what that is I will be showing you on screen now. But that's on the tip of the wing. I believe it's three or four feathers in from the top. On either side and it is symmetrical I should add as well as well as it that the font on the original feels a lot crisper and flows a lot nicer into each other it feels a lot more natural and you should be able to see a photo on screen now of a wide variety of original fonts of the Lushots logo on these helmets which will give you some more of an idea of what I mean by that I should also add before I end this video that there were some instances where the decal was stenciled on, like there was a stencil and then it was painted on by white paint or something like that. Again, those are a lot harder to identify and verify if they're real or fake because there isn't many out there and 
a stencil can be created by you or me, it could be created by anyone, and a bit of white paint isn't too hard to come by. Um, so yeah, but they are they do exist. There is an uh, SHD one and their loose shots stencil. I've seen on two different helmets. They're very rare. I've not seen them personally for sale myself, but there are obviously a few pictures and examples online. Um, but yeah, uh, the the stencil ones I would be cautious of, but they could be real. Is what I'm just trying to say by that. As well as that, one last thing, with all all Zico applied during the Third Reich era, there are a, a few instances where they were kind of applied all over the place and a bit messed up. Like a misplaced decal is probably the best way to describe that. These these misplaced decals, these error decals, may contradict a few of the words I've said, a few of the statements I've made, and the ways I've, ident uh, I've suggested to identify these decals. For example, if the, the wing's slightly placed off center and it might give the appearance that it's a closed wing decal. Again, misplaced decals are hard because they obviously misplaced and it kind of does affect the integrity of the decal. So it is kind of weird from where you'd call that original and where you would call it re reproduction. But again, hopefully this video helps give you a rough start, an idea on how to at least have some confidence when buying these decals and looking at them. So that's the loose shots decals uh, and the real and fake out there. I hope you've managed to learn a thing or two today by watching this video. Hopefully with this, this new information you can look for and authenticate helmet with confidence and reassurance of what's real and what's fake. However, if you do have a helmet and haven't had much luck with determining whether or not the decal is real or fake by watching this video, I'd recommend posting on the War Relics EU forum. The guys over there should be able to give you a strong second opinion. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Moose Militaire for more historical insights and information.